was there. That used to be. Right, this is the morning after the day, or the whole day, the night before. I'm down at Meadow Farm Marina uh, between Barra and Salby in Leicestershire. Uh, the video coming up will show you what's happened yesterday. It got so dark that um, I just had to stop filming because it got dark. The boat has been moved, um, so watch the video and then I'll show you the, uh, the end result. Right, good morning, good morning. We are in a familiar place. We are down at Baron Saw. Um, I just got the call last night to say that uh, this boat was going to be taken out today. Um, how are we doing? All right. Um, so we've got CBS Commercial Boat Services down here. They're just bringing a small boat through the lock. And then we've got Crouches across there. They're going to come in from the field. Yeah, so as I was saying, I got the call last night. Um, they've got a slot to come down and do it. So hopefully we're going to get this boat out today, get it righted, get it drained out. Here's the uh, crane coming across the field now from Crouches. Um, I did think they was coming down a lot, lot earlier. I was told about seven o'clock, but um, it was pitch black at seven o'clock, so I couldn't see anyone coming down there. So we've got Crouches across there, getting the crane ready. And CBS, Commercial Boat Services, are just bringing theirs through the lock now. Uh, I'll just take this opportunity before we start to thank everyone for uh, donating on the GoFundMe page. That's really good ears. And uh, just a little shout out to um, some of the trolls, only one or two of them on the comments. Andy Cunningham. Yes, Andy. Um, when you put some on YouTube, a comment, and you just put a username, I see it as your proper name comes up, mate. So, you know, if, if you don't like what I'm doing, then don't watch, don't tune in, mate. Anyway, that's enough for him anyway. That's not for mention. Um, right, so here's CBS coming through now. They've launched this boat from Meadow Farm, which is uh, further down there, about a mile and a half. Um, and that's what we're gonna use to tow this boat up to Meadow Farm. I just wanna mention as well that I have a, a super thanks button now on my videos. Um, and that's just in case anyone wants to say, yeah, thanks. What I will say is anything raised from the Super Thanks will go to uh, a local charity in my town and it's the Rainbows Children's Hospice. Chap on the front of the boat, he's uh, travelled down this morning from York. So they set off about five o'clock this morning. Uh, the other two lads, there's one on the boat and there's one across here. They stayed the night locally somewhere. We'll see how far that crane can get down here towards the bank. Right, so we've got the crane uh, ready. It's not quite in position yet, but um, just been talking to this chap here. That's Andy from Commercial Boat Services. Um, what they're going to do is uh, set up, so they'll probably take um, a couple of hours to set up. Um, because they like to do things properly and if you look at uh, Commercial Boat Services website you'll see all the equipment they've got, all the jobs that they've uh, been on and you know that they, they do do things properly. So when the uh, pub opens I'll go and fetch them all a tray of tea and coffee because it's getting a little bit cold so it's been 9-10 degrees today but uh, we'll see. Now the boat's come close to it looks like it's coming closer towards the bank, unless the river's gone right down. But there is talk that the boat might actually be sat on the old supports of the bridge, the supports of the old bridge where it was. Um, so we'll soon find out anyway. straps and out. Interesting to see how they're going to do this.
Well, I'm not going to do too much talking. I'll just let you uh, watch what's happening. So it's all cordoned off. I've got permission to be inside the cordon. In case anyone's thinking, what's he doing there? So they put big heavy straps around the stern. I'm just putting one around the bow now. And then I don't know if it's going to lift out or if we're just going to try and just lift it up to touch so they can just start draining the water off. But I talking to the chap this morning and he says uh, as they start to lift it should right itself. So hopefully that's what will happen. A few people on the other side having a look. some attention but I think this is what should happen in the first place so uh, my advice is if anyone else finds themselves in this sort of situation you know commercial boat services they run from Chester they go all over and they work hand in hand with uh, the local haulage firms as well to say there's Crouchers down here Croucher a local firm said it on my last video they set up in 1948 as a, a little family run business the CBS commercial boat services they've been set up since 1998 and they're part of uh, the Chester boat company peg number nine there look looks a nice spot doesn't it cast out in the middle there get a few uh, whatever I've seen someone down here the other week and uh, two lads fishing for pike. So just to recap then on uh, what happened here. Further upstream, this is the backwater here. Um, the river comes up from here and goes off down, joins the canal there. And obviously you go that way to Leicester and Salby and the south and all them sort of places I should say. Um, this boat was moored right up there about three o'clock in the morning it broke free with its moorings as well um, apparently the way when the river's in flood they can normally determine which way the current's going but there's such a force of water coming down on that particular night that the water actually came a different direction and it went right behind the boat and just took it and it comes down here around the bend hit a boat down here as i say about three in the morning and just finished up on the bridge here. Um, people who've seen the previous videos will know what happened. The boat was upright, it rose up with the water, water come down, caught on the side of the bridge and there was a slight tilt on it and then well we know what happened. Um, and that's why I set up the uh, GoFundMe page for it because uh, I thought just you know I don't know the owner uh, but I just thought, you know, it's, it's on so home, I just set it up. Um, so thank you to everyone who's donated there. Um, raised about six and a half grand. I think this operation's costing uh, 6,100, something like that. Um, I don't think they've had to pay any VAT for the capacity of salvage work, so that helps. Um, Request. I'm going to put a link, there's another GoFundMe um, page uh, on there, well, on the GoFundMe website and it's another boat up here that sank and it's, it's sort of half submerged and uh, a friend of the owner has asked me to just put the link on this video for them which I will do um, and I appreciate, and no time to hard, but I do really appreciate the people who donated um, so the owners you know as well the owners asked me this morning he says i need a way to try and thank these people i said well i'll i'll just put it out on this video yeah so at the moment you can see the crane here look i thought it would be a bigger crane but this has obviously got some lift on it uh two two cables on it two winches look we've seen here one at one end one at the other there's a chuck across there look you can see him here litter picking apparently this chap and his uh, friend come down every day around this area doing all the litter picking keeping the village clean and you, I don't know if you can see from you can see the water line where it's been about probably four or five inches where it's come down the actual level's come down and 
the, this back end is really high. I don't think it was that close to the bank when I came down last time. Well, I think the uh, wires are attached now, so I'll move to the side. So you can see the winch is turning now. We're just taking the slack up. And you can see now where them straps are starting to uh, take hold. Uh, they'll just go down now and double check everything's going okay. There's a glitter pick across there, look, still. Doing a lovely job there. Bit of movement on the boat now. As I say, this stern then might be sat on the old supports. Obviously, bricks the ports in the water. Yeah, it's definitely on the brick support because you can hear it. There we go. Just take it nice and easy. Yeah, so the stern end is still caught on the bank. I think we're going to put another strop round now. Right, they've got that other strop on now, so it's taking the strain. Let's see how we go here. So as you can see, what they're doing now is putting that another strop round because on the front of the boat, we think that some of the mooring is still attached. If you look from the other side, I'll try and get round there in a minute, the, uh, there's a chain there that's really really tight so we think part of the mooring is wedged on the bridge and as you try and lift it's not letting it go so what they're going to do is put another strop further up here further up here and then take the front strop off and then they should be ready to go then but as I said it's just it's minute by minute you've just got to reevaluate all the time now, just been talking to this chap here the uh, dark woolly hat on He's from Canal and River Trust and he actually lives just down here on one of the boats and um, he was saying that when boats come up and down this part of the river they have to use this central arch. Now normally on bridges you'll find a blue arrow indicating that's the archway to use but the local council won't allow anything to be attached to this bridge because it's a listed building. It's been here since uh, you know, the 1800s. Um, but he says in the archives there are some photos the way you can see um, the old walkway for the horses so if you look across there there's that armco now that armco before that was there that used to be a wooden walkway it was a towpath and when the boats came down here horse drawn they'd detach the horse obviously from the boat they would walk the boat through the horse would go up and over the bridge to the other side and then reattach and then carry on. So I never knew that. I bet quite a few people didn't know that either. What he says on this archway here, this first one, there's always boats getting grounded, they just come through there and there's a chap in the water at the moment and he's just up to probably his hips and so it's not very deep at all. Probably two and a half, three foot. There he is. Just down there. So he's actually stood on the riverbed. And this is attaching up to the strop now to the middle. Yeah, that's interesting. That's part of the old towpath where they walked the, uh, the boat through and the horses went over the road and reattached on the other side. Oh, I've come up onto the bridge now because uh, the safest place to be. Yeah, it's 
made it quite awkward with the part of the mooring stuck to the front of the boat. Whether that's catching on the bridge or not, we're not sure. Right, well, I've repositioned the winch, try and get it at a different angle. I think the problem they're having is it's catching on the bottom. It's very shallow at the moment. So they'll do a little bit of winching, then they'll readjust, and then winch again, and then get it back on its, uh, its right way up. I just spoke to Andy from CBS and uh, what they're going to do now is you can probably see it down there they're going to pump water out and then they're going to put a, a pulley block on the front and just pull it back into the river Right, I'll see you around then Yeah, see you Right, so what's happening at the moment is they're going to pump water out the front of the boat and then uh, pull her forward. She's putting a fight up. Uh, pull her forward um, so she'll refloat. And then this is the fuel boat that um, travels in this area once a month. They come around here, they'll go up to Sawley uh, from Cosington and they'll come down and go up to Sawley and, uh, around there and you can get your gas and your, your logs in there. Well, there's a fuel boat going successfully through. Right, so they're just going to move that winch now from that post. And it looks like they're going to put it around this tree, which is more substantial. Now you can see this chap here, he's wading out, but he's got his life jacket on, which is a flotation device. So there's no way he's going to go under, even if he loses his footing, he's just going to float. And that's what you should have when you're working in and around water. All the crew, even the bank crew, they've all got life jackets or flotation devices on. starboard side there's a right dent in it and I think that's where it's been sat on on the side it's been sat on the support of one of the one of the old supports of the bridge and the weight of the boat each side has just bent it in see here look all the brickwork down here that's what it's been sat on and just down here quite shallow but underneath the surface there's loads and loads of the old brickwork, the old support of the, the bridge that was here many many years ago. So what they're going to do now is they've put the strop through the windows and they're just going to lift it from that end. But we've had a chat with the owner and he's given them the go ahead to do that. There's actually an underwater obstruction that um, midships it's caught on see 
here, every time they pull it forward, it's inching its way forward into the river, but this back end is making it tilt. Alright, so we've gone through a different angle now of that tree across there. Let's see if we can just take it off this obstruction. Let's blow the water line. Swing this back end round now. That front end will become clear of the bridge. Yeah, so that brickwork there, that's been the problem, and that goes right the way along. Um, you've got the one there, you've got the one in the middle, and you've got the one on the far side. And the middle's been resting on the one obviously in the middle. So about to drag the stern end round it's caught slightly there but what they're going to do now is reposition this winch so they can do a straight pull further across there and get this stern end round and then hopefully she should be floating has been repositioned and we're going to try now another lift which will hopefully free itself from that end to change camera because both batteries have gone on the other one now so I'm on the uh, original camera that I had before it's getting very dark hopefully we're going to have this righted soon but again I'll just repeat what I said before you cannot just come down tie something to it and just try and winch it straight off because it's not going to work they've had to reposition this winch and just try different methods I'm just taking the strain up now. Got repositioned a couple of minutes ago. And I'm just trying to swing that back end out now in uh, to the river where it's deeper water. Down there, you can already see that now because it's dark. But down there's really, really shallow, probably nine inches, something like that. Right, so here we are back at Meadow Farm, and here's the boat now. So we got to about half past five time. There was problems getting the boat off the shallow part of the river as I said in the video you just watched it was on the uh, stone foundations eventually got it sorted out about seven o'clock at night and they've towed it from Barrow which is right down there up this way through a lock and it's on this pontoon it's on this jetty now um, so I spoke to Mick and he said to have a look on board and show you what devastation happens if you get caught in floods with your boat. Alright, so we're at the stern end, obviously. We just got to look in there. So when it went, everything, everything on the port side fell down to the starboard side. It's listing now because there is water underneath the floorboards in the hull. There's neighbours around here have all rallied round, they brought a portable pump down and that's been pumping water out and it has risen quite a bit and we're just going to go on board now and have a quick look 
So these are all the straps that were uh, used yesterday by CBS and that's the devastation that it caused. Everything from that side just went that side. All the soft furnishings, um, cushions, pillows, blankets, mattresses, they've all been sat in water and that's what's adding to weight and it's all on this side. While we're down here we'll have a quick look around, not walking around but just a quick uh, scan around. That's all Metaform Marina, all here, all around here. These are some of the new chalets that they've had built, they look lovely don't they? All up there, that used to be all um, touring caravans some years ago. But uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. Um, don't forget I've got that Super Thanks button. If you want to use that, as I said, all the money from Super Thanks will be going to the Children's Rainbow Hospice in Loughborough. Um, yeah, and thanks to everyone who has donated through GoFundMe. And then just a big shout out to all the lads from uh, Crouches and everybody from Commercial Boat Services. They've worked really hard, really well, really long hours. Some of them lads have put in a 14 hour shift and then they're traveling on top of that. So that's it for now. And um, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Thanks again, bye bye.